so this is uh, some work I did uh, last year while I was doing a, a contract at the Université de Montréal at the group de Recherche Information. Uh, this is a joint group with uh, Jing that is over there. And uh, so this is <clears throat> a research challenge. Yes, research challenge is uh, very, very exciting things. It's, imagine like your boss comes to you and say, well, you have a month and a half to program this thing, but you don't really know how to do it. And not only you have to do it, but also do it in a way nobody did it before. So it's interesting and you can publish. <laughs> so it's a very, very frantic. It's, uh, it really pushes you to write the worst code you ever wrote. And uh, one of the things that I have learned with the open source uh, world is, OK, don't be ashamed of your worst code. And even, like in general, people who write this type of, of research challenge, they never share the code because it's horrible. So you have it all in, in GitHub now. You can see it and say, oh my god, this guy Pablo. And Beijing is better. But Pablo is like terrible. How can he write this type of stuff? But OK, so the task itself is you take one query that come from real uh, search engine uh, query logs from uh, Microsoft uh, Japan, actually. Microsoft Research Japan. And 200 web pages rank from the real search engine over that query. And you have to get all the relevant information in a thousand characters. So you are summarizing 200 pages in a thousand characters. Uh, and to simplify the task a little bit, the queries belong only to eight set types. So for example, celebrities, location, how to, things like that. But they don't tell you which type is which for each query. OK, so here is a little example. The query is Whitney Houston death. And uh, they, the examples they provide us, they never give us an output. They give us the evaluation queries. So the way it's evaluated says, well, you, you have to return something that has these this good nuggets of information, like February 11, 2012, or Suite 434. And uh, you will be evaluated like that. The results haven't come up yet, so we still don't know how bad we did. But we know, we know we didn't do that well. So here are some of the actual queries that came during the evaluation, so you have a little better idea of what the task is about. So for example, Ron Paul Tea Party, or Marking gay influence. Uh, so you really, it's, uh, it's your guess, my guess, what these queries are really about. Yes, uh, I mean, if you talk about Nancy Pelosi, okay, you, you want a little bio. But if you talk about Ron Paul and the Tea Party, well, do they love each other? Do they have tea every day? I don't know. So our approach is, uh, before uh, moving here, I was uh, in IBM Research and uh, helped build the the IBM Jeopardy system. So the intention here was try to apply the same uh, deep QA architecture to the one-click uh, task. And one of the main things of the deep QA system was not to uh, use type information explicitly. So one of the big changes of normal question answering systems is, OK, if you say, who was the president in uh, uh, 1978. So you will, in general, you will start saying, oh, you're asking for a president, or you're asking for a person. One of the biggest things about the, the job party system is that it doesn't do that. That's why it could fail miserably, but could also use more evidence. OK, so the approach on hunter-gatherer is a simplification of the DQ architecture, where you hunt for text nuggets, and then gather evidence for those nuggets, score them using the evidence, and uh, <clears throat> try to assemble a final output using the highly scored nuggets. So here is uh, what we mean with hunting text nuggets. You get a, a passage as returned by a search engine uh, on top of these 200 pages. And then we chunk them in a smart way to find which things could be relevant pieces of information for this query. Then we actually do recursive searches where we take the original query plus the nugget, like with the Houston Dead Suite uh, 434 and gather more extra passages to use as evidence. Then we score these things with a variety of, of, of scoring methods, and we find the sentences that contain these highly scored nuggets. And we wrote all this in a month and a half. And because we wrote all this in a month and a half, the output looks horrible. 
Yes. So this is for one of our outputs. And this was the output that I thought was good enough to show. And uh, imagine, for a month and a half, I spent looking at output like this daily <laughs> until my brain bleed internally. <laughs> so one of the big problems is spam, yes. I know for, for many people it's, it's not a problem, it's a way of living, but for, for us that trying to filter these things, it was very, very difficult. So we are looking for Hillary Clinton first lady, and we start talking about North America, Turkey first ladies, visit airport jeep, blah, blah, blah. So we didn't got in time to include a, a component that filters things that make no sense, and there are libraries that do that. But uh, around here, it started getting nice, like Clinton was elected to the United States, becoming the first lady elected to public office, etc. So we will definitely score points from this one. The other ones looks even worse. OK, but the important part is why Python? Yes. So I believe that hunter-gatherer really goes back to the duct tape language origins of Python. We have two people working very closely together under a tight deadline, integrating a large number of existing tools and libraries. We use Indri, that is a, a research search engine written in C++, NLTK that was presented by, by the, one of the first speakers, a CCL parser that is a C++ uh, unsupervised parser, GLPK that is what we'll be speaking today, Mallet, that is a Java machine learning library, and boilerplate to extract text, the text from pages, plus others. Very, very exploratory coding. And the most important part that I want to bring about the goodness of Python is we had absolutely no documentation. All co the code was the only documentation we had. And from that perspective, Python was amazingly successful. Uh, besides that, uh, Jing is from China and from Argentina, we, we could understand the code much better than we would understand speaking each other. <laughs> so the case study, the thing I wanted to, to share with you today that I think uh, is very, very nice, you, you could use it for your own work, is this library called GLPK. Yes, the state-of-the-art uh, summarization, a state-of-the-art summarization technique uses integer linear programming and express the, the selection of uh, sentences for a summary as an optimization problem. So if we have n nuggets and m sentences, with some sentences containing certain nuggets, and we have a score for each nugget, we want to select sentences up to certain length so to maximize the scores of the contained nuggets. And there is this very nice library called GNU Linear Programming uh, Toolkit, GLPK, GLK, and it has a small uh, domain-specific language for linear programming. So the problem we have is expressed in a GLPK that way. You say, uh, I will have a, this matrix that tells me which nugget appears in which sentence. I have the length of each sentence, and I have the weight, how good is each nugget. And what I'm trying to find is this, uh, which sentence will make the output, yes? And I'm trying to maximize the sum of the scores of the sentence and make it to the output so that the length of all the sentences is less than the total length and everything, uh, I mean, all, all the variables are, uh, are um, same. So on the good side of the Python bindings is you don't need to execute the program outside Python, but the Python bindings don't do much more than executing the program outside Python. You do have to give a file that contains the whole uh, program inside. So, so you will need to do a lot of printouts that produce that file. But once you execute them, so you, you give a file name that contains the file, then you say update solve. And from there, you can read uh, this constraints uh, object. We'll give you back, uh, where are you? Constraints.s contains the array s inside the, the matrix, and you can manipulate it from Python. So, and some concluding runs. Okay, so the first thing is, if you go to the, the, the code and look at the, in line 100 of parser.py, it has this function called mix brackets. It's one of the most horrible functions I ever wrote in my life. And 
when uh, the first speaker by uh, talking about NLTK was saying, well, Gate lets you do annotation. So around 2000, the NLP community got together and decided that changing the text while you are doing NLP is a bad idea. You want to do standoff annotations. You want to let the text fixed and say, oh, between this offset and this offset, I'm going to put this annotation. And LTK take us back, I don't know, 15 years, and just give you back list of object, list of strings for many tasks. So when you want to run two tools over the same text, you will have to mix this list of strings. And this is list of strings that have a change in subtle ways, like capitalization or, or, or a dot attached to it. Uh, it's basically, a, a, you have to do a, like a sequence anal alignment for biology to solve the mixing the two things. And uh, so that's there in a very ugly format. And the other thing is, uh, I really come from more than Java world, and Python is not bringing the good out of me. I wrote the whole code <laughs> with no types. I was a return list of tuples. And then poor Jean has to read it <laughs> and make sense out of it. I'm really proud of the guy. But uh, it's, uh, it's a little bit of, uh, I still need to get more into really how to write Python in a way that is not uh, noxious for the world. But uh, overall, uh, I'll definitely use it again if, if I end up in another uh, of these uh, research competitions. This is must be my six or seven research competitions so far. I always say when I participate in one, I'll never do it again. But uh, well, and take a look at the code. This is uh, definitely a non-trivial piece of uh, research code. Uh, if you manage to run it, I will be very surprised. Uh, thank you very much.